Welcome to Course 3, Unit 2, Lesson 1, Return on Equity, Warren Buffett's Favorite Number. Okay, so as we go through this lesson, you're going to quickly uh, learn why return on equity is a really important number that you need to understand as a stock investor. And you'll understand why Warren Buffett places so much emphasis on the return on equity. Um, although this number doesn't substitute um, understanding how the intrinsic value calculator works, that gives you a much more in-depth understanding of what the value of a company is. Uh, the return on equity number is a really quick snapshot that you can look at and determine whether uh, a company is something that you should be genuinely interested in. So when we value stocks, we value them in a very similar manner as to the way we value bonds. And in 1977, Warren Buffett actually wrote an article for Fortune magazine. And he wrote this article um, before he became really famous and well known as a uh, stock and bond investor. Back in 1977, he was right on the cusp of becoming uh, well-known, and that's whenever he wrote this article. And I have a link to this article um, at the bottom of this web page where you're viewing the video on the Buffett's Books website. So if you just click on that link, uh, I highly recommend reading this article. In the article, he actually talks about more how inflation eats away at bonds and uh, equities, which is kind of contrary to what John Burr Williams wrote in his uh, Harvard thesis and also uh, goes against what uh, Benjamin Graham had wrote about in uh, The Intelligent Investor. So it's a really uh, interesting article to read it simply for that fact because he kind of goes against the grain on those two really important investment authors. And uh, so I would read it for that reason alone, but also in there he talks about how he values stocks and bonds similarly. So uh, I think you'll get a lot of really good information and a lot of good reading out of that article. But the reason I mention this is because in order to understand how return on equity works, you've got to kind of understand how he's valuing stocks and bonds. Okay, so when we look at a bond, uh, the value of that bond is all the all the money that you're going to get out of the bond throughout the duration that you own it. Okay, and when you figure out how much you're going to get out of it, you just discount it back to what the present day value is. Okay. So when we're dealing with a bond, you're dealing with coupon payments, which are paid to you semi-annually. And then after the term expires on the bond, you get your par value back on the bond, which is typically $1,000. Now, when you're dealing with stocks, it's very similar, only there's just a slight difference. Instead of receiving uh, biannual uh, coupon payments, instead you're receiving quarterly dividend payments. Okay, And instead of receiving a par value back, um, it's based off of the book value. So how much did the book value uh, turn into by the time you would go ahead and sell the shares? Now, if you never plan on selling the shares, then that book value will hopefully just keep on growing and then that will affect the value of your pick. So with a bond, you're dealing with a fixed coupon payment and with stocks, you're dealing with a variable dividend payment depending on how the company wants to pay you, but you're still adding up those payments. And uh, whenever the bond matures because there's a term limit, you get your par value back, but with stocks, it's indefinite, okay, and you're basing that value off of how the book value is growing. So that's why they're very similar. And when you're figuring out that intrinsic value, whenever you go back to the intrinsic value calculator that we had in course two, uh, unit three, uh, all that's doing is, is it's using a discount rate or discount calculator, just like we use a discount calculator when we're valuing a bond. So it's a very similar technique. So the reason that all this is important when you're understanding how the return on equity number works is because that book value as it's changing. So that's what we're going to focus on as the book value here. So let's say that we have a generic company called uh, company ABC. And we know that the company is traded at a premium or a discount to that company's book value. So what we're going to say is that company ABC has a book value of $10 a share. Okay. So uh, depending on how this company pays dividends, depending on how this company has been growing that equity or book value um, and what the expectation of how they can grow it in the future, that's going to determine how much people are generally willing to pay over the book value or below the book value. So how much they pay over the book value or how much lower they pay from the book value is, is a function of how fast they can add more money into that book value. So let's say the book value is $10 right now. Well, if they can add a dollar of book value to, to the company in a year's time frame, that's going to be how investors base their opinion on how much they're willing to pay over the book value or under the book value. So let me demonstrate this. 
Okay, so, so for example, let's say that company ABC had an earnings per share of $5 a share. Okay, the EPS is $5. So this company could grow their book value maybe by $5 in a one-year time frame because right now the book value is $10. And let's just assume that the company doesn't pay a dividend. All the earnings goes into the equity of the business. So um, if they have an EPS of five and they actually retain all of that earnings back into the business, the book value next year should be $15, okay? So that's substantial growth, okay? F going from $10 in book up to $15 in a one-year time frame, that's, that's fairly substantial. So here's, here's exactly what I just talked about. So when we look at time now, let's just say that time now, the book value is 10. One year later, because the EPS was five and all that money was retained into the company, the book value next year is $15. So if this company, let's just assume that this company is trading right at its book value. Okay, let's just say that generically. Okay, so if the, the market price is $10 and next year they've added $5 to their book value, most likely the market is going to follow that trend and the market's then going to value the company at at least $15 a share because that's how much it is if you'd end the business today. So you can see that as that book value grows, the market price is going to, is going to trend right with it. And there's a quote that Warren Buffett has that the change in, in the book value over any given year is equal to the intrinsic value change in that company. So when we look at how much of a gain that was, that was a 50% gain because the company was able to add $5 to the book value, which was 10. So that's an enormous gain that that company was able to make. So let's go ahead and uh, do this again, but we're going to do it for a different company. We're going to do it for company XYZ, okay? And I'm, I'm doing it with a different company to highlight why it's important to understand return on equity. And then I'm going to explain it all here at the end. So let's say that we have a company XYZ and the book value on company XYZ is $100 a share, okay? And we're also going to make the same assumption that uh, people are going to, they, they're going to pay a premium or a discount to that hundred dollars. Okay. And let's say that XYZ's earnings per share is also $5 a share. Okay. So they can grow their book value, um, at that rate. They can't grow it any more than that because they're not making any more money than that. So the most that we could expect, okay. In one year time right now is that their, their book value is a hundred dollars per share. Next year, if they make an EPS of $5 a share, the most they're going to be able to add to the book, generally speaking, is $5. So when we look at that growth, okay, we see that that's only 5% growth, okay, and that's not all that much, especially when we compare it to the other company that grew at 50%. Now, the thing that I want to highlight here is that both of these companies, company ABC and company XYZ, had the exact same EPS, they had the exact same earnings per share, okay? But the difference was one company grew at 50% and that market price is gonna trend right with that book value. So that market price would probably have gone up 50% from where you would have bought it uh, one year previous. But then when you look at XYZ, same exact earnings, but they only had a 5% return and it was all because the book value was so high because they had a book value of $100 a share. So what we're talking about here is return on equity, okay? The equity is the book value. It's, a, it's book value per share, okay? So when we look at our equation for return on equity, the return on equity is the net income divided by the shareholder's equity, okay? And as you know, net income, when you break that down into a share per share basis, that's your EPS. And when you take equity and put it down into a per share basis, that becomes book value. So your ROE is really just your EPS divided by your book value. So when we do that for these two companies, for ABC, we knew that the EPS was five and the book value was 10. So our return on equity was 50%. But then when we go over and we look at company XYZ, we see that they had the same exact EPS of $5, but the book value was substantially higher at $100, $100 a share. And so the return on equity, the best the company could get was 5%. So here's, here's the takeaway. Um, a steady or increasing ROE is a company that knows how to reinvest their earnings. Okay, This is important because most stocks retain their earnings in the equity of the business. Since whenever you, whenever you go out and buy a stock, okay, they're going to pay you either through the dividends or through retaining that money into the equity of the business. 
So whenever a company is ret retaining those earnings, but their return on equity is really small, that's not good for you because your market price is going to be a reflection of that small change in the book value. So that's what you want to stay away from. So a declining return on equity is symbolic of management that doesn't know how to reinvest their capital um, in successful assets. And these are the companies that you really want to kind of stay away from. And these are, these are companies that also should be paying out all their money in dividends because they don't know how to reinvest it themselves. So whenever I go and I'm looking at a company and, and if Buffett, you know, his he, he's really adamant about only buying companies that sustain a very high return on equity because he knows that that management knows how to reinvest that capital. And since 75% of the money that's being made is, is put back into the book value of the business and not paid out as a dividend, he wants to make sure that that money is being reinvested in quality assets that are going to continue to make that high rate of return. And by the way, he's not paying any taxes on that money that's being reinvested inside of the company. So that's the reason he wants to find a company with a, hard, with a really high return on equity. I personally look for companies that sustain a return on equity above 7 to 8%. So that's a rule of thumb that I use, and if you want to adopt that, that's up to you. Uh, you can come up with your own benchmarks, but that's generally what I personally look for. So this concludes Course 3, Unit 2, Lesson 1, which is return on equity. And this is Warren Buffett's favorite number, so you're going to want to make sure that you thoroughly understand this. And I hope to see you guys in the next lesson.